Hey guys, hi. Today we'll discuss something called as lag and lead functions. Now lag and lead functions over here are used primarily in uh, numeric fields. Well, primarily in numeric fields, not that they will they can't be used in string or text field. But uh, let's try and understand what lag and lead function can do. Lag and lead functions generally can create columns which will give you previous value from a particular day. For example, let's say there's a table over here and let me assume this, that uh, this is the table which is having uh, let's say a uh, stock data stock market data okay and this table over here is nothing but date this is my volume let's say and this is my closing price cp okay now uh, for every day for example let's say 23rd there's some volume and there's a closing price let's say 24th you still have another closing price over here 124 25th you have another closing price as let's say 132 Similarly, we have closing prices over here for let's say five days. Okay, let's say 128 and let's say 130. Right now, you want to create another column over here. You want to create another column. That another column here is simply nothing but let's say I want to compare it uh, the closing price of this day. I want to compare it with the previous day's close. So I want to create a column over here which is previous days. Right now, I want this value to come over here so that I can compare 123 with 124. Or probably I want instead of this, let me start with this thing. I want this value 123 to come over here so that in today's closure, I can compare today's closure with previous day's closure over here. For example, I want 123 over here. Similarly, I want let's say 124 over here so that I can compare this day's closure with previous day's closure, which is 124. Either I, I might want this previous day's close or if there is a if this data is already been taken and you know we have to do analysis in a different way. We probably can create a table and let's say I want next day's price over here. Right. So I might want 124 over here. This 124 to come over here. Right. I might want this 130 to come over here. I might want this 128 to come over here and so on like this. So I might want to compare a certain value from either the previous incidence value or the next incidence value. For this, there are two functions used lag for this one and lead for this one. These are lag and lead functions. The syntax goes something like this that uh, we write select, let's say a star from, uh, let's say employees. Right. And now select star from employees would mean I've selected all the columns over here. All right. After star, I can give in column star means all. Right. So what I'll do is I'll put up a column over here. And from this comma, I would say that give me another column. Let's say the name of that column is uh, uh, previous month target. Let's say I'm giving the name of this column as previous month's target. But right now there is no column existing in the entire data as previous month's target. Right. What I need to do over here is to create a lag function. Right. That lag function is going to go something like this. So I'll just put in lag. Once I put in lag, I have to give the column by which I want to. Let's say I have put in sales over here because I'm looking at the data of sales generated by the employees over here. Let's say the department is sales and over. Then I'll go for, let's say, uh, black sales over order by and let's say I want to order by date. OK, let me bring it over here so that we can see properly. Let me bring this over here and go for something like this. Right now I can see that this is saying that give me a lag on sales over order by date. That is first order the data as per the date. Once the date has been ordered, then you can give me a lag, right? Lag of sales would mean that you give me against, you create another column, which is previous month's target or previous month's, let's say sales, right? Previous month's sales so that I can consider, I can compare this month's sale with the previous month's sale over here, right? This is the syntax, right? Let's see this in the SQL. We'll see both lag and lead function there, right? In Workbench. Let's go there. All right, so here we are. Let's use one of the uh, databases called a Sakila. So I'll just give a command use Sakila. Right now, let me look at this particular column over here. I inventory, I think payment is a better column over here. So I'll go for this thing. Let me select star from payments, right? Let me have a look at the column over here. The column talk, talks about payment ID. 
the customer id to whom the payment is made staff id who is responsible for taking this what is the rental id what is the amount payment date and last update for example let's say i want this in the uh, order of payment id i want to order this data in terms of payment id which already is there right i don't have to do a lot of things over here i like to see i like to compare every amount as compared to their previous or payment id right so i'll just go for another query which is let's say select select uh, let's say payment id payment id then we can select amount and then now it's the time to create that extra column the next column which is given by lag lag of amount and how do i want to order this i'll have to go for over order by now i can order by date i can order by date payment date i can order by but I, as i can see there are many entries over here for the same payment date over here right so i might want to group the data first and then do it if i want to use the date for the instance i'll use payment id right so i want to see the next i want to compare the next payment with the previous payment right so let's let's take uh, let's see how that can be done so i'll go for order by payment underscore id so now the data gets ordered by payment underscore id the table is already ordered like that but i think you know that is where we can go ahead with this so order by payment id over this lag of this right and i'll name this column as uh, let's say previous uh invoice amount right i'll call it previous invoice amount now this entire thing this entire thing over here this is my one column right so there are three columns one is payment id the amount and this extra column created because using the lag function as previous invoice amount now i have to go for ending the query and i have to tell from which table so the table is payment right this is the table once i end the query and execute this i'll get something like this here i'm getting can you see previous invoice amount i'm getting the previous invoice amount over here now i can compare if i need to compare right i can get basically we can see that this 2.99 comes over here 0.99 comes over here 5.99 comes over here right this is nothing but lag function i can actually offset this as well that is i want the first payment id to compare it after three payment ids let's say for some reason i want to do it so i can just click on this particular lag parenthesis i can say comma and three this is giving me that offset kind of thing in which this 2.99 right will come later on okay by the way you can see a null value over here because for the first payment id there is no zeroth payment id right so that is why there is a null value coming over here because there is no previous entity to compare it with whereas rest of the values are absolutely from the previous invoice now if i go for comma 3 it's going to give me the it's going to leave the top 3 rows empty and it's going to take 2.99 against fourth over here let's see we can offset this one that is i want to start comparison of this amount after 3 days so 3 days later i have compared i have made this when 3 days before i had made this similarly 9.99.99 and so on like this we can always compare take differences and we can you know uh, do a lot of stuff over here especially useful for stock market data in which i want to compare today's close with previous day's close let's say i want to do that in a big data right so this is what lag function can do now if i want to just do the opposite i'll just copy this query and i'll put it over here and i want to just do the opposite this time what i want is i want to take the this particular 0.99 above let me get back to the original table first okay i'll go back to the original table this is my original table what i want is 0.9 to be over here 5.99 in front of 0.99 this 0.99 the fourth one in front of 5.99 so that i want to compare every days or i should say every payment id's amount with next payment id that i'm generating over here right next invoice that i'm generating over here that can be done using the lead function over here right if i go for lead function and still order by payment id as previous invoice amount from payment right it's going to do that now this time there is no null above because for the first day there is a next day which is the second one but for the last day there will not be any next day that is why the last value will come out to be null over here right just like in uh, lag function we can also go for offset over here we can just give comma let's say 4 in that case i get the fourth day over here sorry i mean it's going to ignore the first four it's going to start from the fifth one 9.99 comes over here 4.99 comes over here this 9.99 comes over here sorry 4.99 comes over here and so on like this 
this time i can easily see that the last four values will be null because for them there is no fourth next right for this value there is no fourth next all these values have no fourth next all right if i don't give anything it's by default first next that is the next one right so this is what lag and lead function can do for you guys, especially applicable in financial amounts. But it doesn't mean that I can, uh, you know, put it only in the uh, numeric values. You can do it for the string values over here as well, right? So this is lag and lead function.